Hi, my name is Raul and I'm the Senior RF Technician over at VDA Systems Company. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through a public safety installation within the city of Miami. So to start this video off, we're inside the BDA closet. So remember, a BDA is grabbing a signal from a tower that's far away, and in this case, since it's public safety, we're grabbing the system frequencies for police and fire over the, the air with a donor antenna up on the roof. That donor antenna is then being fed to this amplifier and then boosted and injected with signal and redistributed throughout the building so that the signal from outside the tower outside from the tower is going to be able to be uh, available for all public safety personnel inside the building. In theory, when this system is installed correctly, radio frequencies are going to be boosted to a level of less or better than 95 dB. 95 dB is the threshold that we want to aim for, so let's talk about how we got there. So this building is an open air parking garage, and we're going to get into the, later in the video why this building, even though it is mostly open air, it actually required a system, and that has to do with building materials. Inside the BDA room, we're, like I said before, we're bringing in a signal from a donor antenna outside on the roof. That donor, in, donor signal is being fed via this pipe and into the BDA. The BDA is a Westo. This model that we're using has the enunciator out front, and we like that because it saves in cost and also space inside the BDA closet. Um, and of course, this room is two hour rated, per NFPA and IFC regulations. In the event of an emergency, this building can be on fire. This room will last at least two hours. And on top of that, all equipment is in a NEMA 4 enclosure. So a firefighter can come in here and spray this with a water hose and the system will still keep running. The important thing here is actually the RF design. The science behind why this system will ultimately be able to grab a signal and redistribute that throughout the building it comes down to what kind of amplifier you choose, what kind of donor signal you have, so how strong is that inbound signal, and then using a combination of different materials, different kinds of cables and cable lengths to decide what is the right place to place antennas throughout the building. So like I said, everything is coming into this, into this room. I have two pipes in here. This is my horizontal runs out to the floor as well as my two hour rated enclosure all the way up to the roof for the donor antenna. All riser cables have to be two hour rated. So that's why everything is on top of being hard piped. It's also being protected through a chase that we'll cover later in the video. Now the signal is coming in and out of here. The amplifier is automatically controlling how much signal should go up and down to the outside network and in, into the internal network. On top of that, the RF engineer like myself has to commission the system as to not overpower the outbound signal and potentially knock down the, uh, the public safety system for the AHJ or the authority having jurisdiction. In this case, the city of Miami fire and police. And the last thing I want to touch on before we head out to the floor is this red box right here. This red box is our battery backup system. In the case of an emergency, the firefighters or public safety personnel might cut power to the building. Since there isn't a generator attached to this building, we have to add an additional power supply so that this system can keep running up to 24 hours before depleting all battery storage inside this cabinet. This also matches the survivability and NEMA enclosures waterproof of uh, the amplifier system. So this is a key component and a major difference between a cellular and a public safety system in that a cellular system does not require battery backup. So here we are in one of the first steps as we provide signal coverage to the inside of the building. And on the other side of this wall right here is the BDA room. So we're inside another electrical room that's further removed from, from the BDA closet. And the signal is coming down this two inch pipe and into that enclosure behind me. From there, we're splitting into the first floor and also continuing up. So these junction boxes are really important and they have to be the right size to support the amount of splitters and couplers along with the rigid cable that we use for our systems. So uh, this main junction is a critical point. What you put at the beginning of the system will dictate how everything is down the road. These systems are almost like a, uh, like a water hose or like a sprinkler system. If you cut off one of the main branches, signal will not travel throughout the building as you need it. So it's important that these main first junctions are always done at the most pristine level with the best connections and the best 
uh, maintaining, maintaining your cable bends and maintaining that everything is allocated correctly with the right covers and splitters. Let's take a moment and talk about building materials. Even though garages that are open air like this typically don't need systems, this one particularly is in a unique situation where it's shadowed by buildings to the north where the donor signal is coming from, as well as the windows or the open air spaces of the parking garage have this decorative steel shielding that are actually, it's actually blocking the signal from penetrating inside. The steel coupled with the reinforced concrete out of the parking garage is a perfect combination for a BDA system. This is basically acting like a Faraday cage. It's blocking all the signal from really reaching in here and penetrating as far down as it needs to, which is what triggered this public safety BDA installation. So the way this building was designed, every floor has two antenna locations, one at each corner by the elevator and the stairwell, which are usually the most prone to signal problems from the outside towers. Here I'm standing next to our two hour rated chase. So like I mentioned before, the signal coming up and down uh, between floors and all the way up to the, the donor antenna has to be protected by a two hour fire rating. And here is one of our first stops on the second floor and it's branching out over to this antenna. This first stop right here is our omnidirectional antenna that is pro providing coverage to the stairwell and the elevator behind me. Now inside that junction box, we're gonna have another cable that runs all the way to the other side of this uh, parking garage where we have a directional panel. That panel is, like I've said before in other videos, it's like a flashlight. It's sending signal in all directions uh, where you point the antenna. And we're pointing it right down the ramp to provide coverage for kind of a tight, uh, closed area where the signal is really, really poor. So here's the directional panel at the end of the run on the second floor. It's right next to the stairwell and the elevator. And this area, even though it's a directional antenna with a 60 degree cone, so 800 megahertz with 8 dBi directional panel, we have about a 60 degree cone and it's shining, direction, shining signal in the direction down the ramp. It's also providing coverage to this side of the elevator and the stairwell. And I'm not, used, not too worried about putting coverage right in front of it because this is the north side of the building where the donor signal is coming from the strongest. So the other side of the, of the building has the base station that's providing signal, and then this, this antenna is just helping to match that, right? So it's providing signal down the hallway, down the ramp, and also to the elevator and the stairs with a 60 degree cone, 8 dBi. So here we are at the first and last step of the process. It's the first step because this is the incoming signal that comes from the base station tower. And it's also the last step in the process because anybody who's uh, down below mics up with a public safety radio, they'll be gonna be communicating out to the tower from this antenna. This is a directional ADBI panel that's optimized for 760 megahertz all the way up to 860 megahertz. So it's working on the first net and public safety P25 system. This is looking directly at the tower and coming down this weatherhead and into the two hour rated chase all the way down to our amplifier. This is also sharing the same pipe with the horizontal runs that are coming in with the boosted signal from the amplifier. So this is coming up and down. You have a downlink and an uplink on every system and both have to be calibrated perfectly in order to not harm the, the out, outside signal and also make sure that you have adequate coverage inside. Thanks for watching, I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions, comments or concerns or if you'd like to talk about your project, Feel free to contact us at info at bdasystemsco.com. We'll be happy to help and consult on any project nationwide. Thank you.